therapies, um, then you go there. But in reality, it's a combination of all these uh, all these things. There's probably not one specific uh, way of internal ageing. And of course, as far as external ageing is concerned, and that's an area that I've primarily been uh, uh, treating for, uh, for many years now, um, the external ageing is due to the loss of elasticity. And that's because of the general ageing process, it's because of sun exposure and because of smoking. Also, when you think of the, um, the body, and the, especially the facial area, um, you have to think about it in three layers. There's the external part, which is the skin that we can see. There's the soft tissue, which either disappears in terms of volume, or it actually drops down. And so that's underneath the skin. And of course, if you lose the bony volume as well, which happens as we get older, then you get a, a, the three-layer effect. Now, we can improve that with different injectables, etc., but also through the anti-aging process of uh, using hormone replacement, etc. And so, just looking at the statistics, and uh, I'm not going to harp on this, but uh, certainly the, the amount of treatments, of non-surgical treatments, performed in America and certainly in Australia, with the, the numbers very much uh, parallel this. It's huge, as you can see. Now, the thing is that trying to improve the quality of the skin is actually quite... Uh, quite difficult. There are very many ways of trying to do so, and you'll hear some different uh, lectures on this today. One of the things that I, I have been doing, and uh, I've only just started because it's a, it's a brand new technique. It, virtually no one's using it in Australia as yet, or if they are, they're using it to a minimal degree. And that is this use of, uh, of uh, plasma-rich protein and stem cells. So what happens as we... Uh, as we age, we lose the elastin and the collagen, and uh, we, we just start losing the subcutaneous um, layers as well. We start getting these wrinkles forming, and I think we've had plenty of, uh, of descriptions of those. And as we lose elasticity, we start seeing the, um, the lines forming, and we start seeing folds forming here, the exposure of the bone, we get the sagging of the chin. We get ptosis of, uh, of the muscles and the, the lines forming all, all around here. So one of the problems with skin treatments is trying to get that skin tightening. There are uh, different ways of, uh, of trying to tighten the skin. There's radio frequency energy, there's light energy, there's laser, trying to improve the quality. One of the things that I found was um, when I was doing some mesotherapy, which is the injection of uh, small amounts of product into the subcutaneous tissue, um, I was finding that uh, even if you were just putting the needles in and not much product, people were getting an improvement in the, the look of their skin, a bit of a glow. And so we started talking about the meso lift or meso glow by injecting small amounts of product under the skin. Now, you can use products such as um, a Sculptra, which is a, a, an available product. Um, you can use a uh, hyaluronic acid. So in, instead of uh, products like Juvederm, which is cross-linked hyaluronic acid, you can use non-cross-linked hyaluronic acid and inject that in little blebs, blebs under the skin, and that will improve it to a degree as well. Um, just to the continuing of the ageing process, sometimes treating the skin alone is just not enough because as we age and we get some uh, descent of the malar fat pad here, um, this is an area that needs either tightening by a surgical means, filling the area to, to lift it, or sometimes some of the, um, uh, the skin treatments, if they are strong enough and good enough, you will get the little fibres attaching from the skin through the subcutaneous tissue into the, the muscle area. As the skin tightens, you will get some elevation of this mid-face area and, of course, of the jowl as well. The other thing that I, I just think is interesting, and this is the, one of the reasons that we uh, need to look at you know, what we're going to do, because if you are just practicing anti-aging medicine and you're not doing any cosmetic medicine, then you'll find that people will be going somewhere else to uh, practice it. And I think what you will find is that most of, the patient, uh, most of the doctors that are actually practicing cosmetic medicine will start learning the form of anti-aging medicine as well. And so if, I think it narrows the amount of work that you can do. So if you, are, uh, if you look at the life expectancy, you know, 
it's just increased over the years and now for a female in Australia life expectancy is above 80 and a male is approaching 80 as well. And probably the most important statistic, and this is from uh, the most recent census, is that in 2006, 13.1% of the population was greater than 65. And predicting that in another uh, 20 or 30 or so years, 27% of the population are going to be over the age of 65. And they're going to want internal and external ageing processes to improve. And just an interesting thing is that uh, uh, you can see here that now the life expectancy from the age of 65 has increased significantly. So if you're 65, you're going to live at least another 20 or so odd years from now. So how do wrinkles form? Well, we know that wrinkles form because of the sun damage, etc. but it's also with the muscle movement. And uh, that's why uh, when we see these lines forming, these frown lines, Usually they form only during function, but as we get older, as we lose the elasticity in the skin, we can actually see them at rest as well. So there have been things like Botox, of course, which is uh, probably one of the most common treatments that we use uh, to try and relax these muscles. Now, when we talk about uh, uh, some of these new skin treatments that uh, can be used, it needs to be considered in combination with other treatments, such as using Botox, perhaps skin tightening with um, light therapy or thermage, and with treatment of the underlying bony and muscular areas as well. So essentially what we're, we're looking at are the possibilities of autologous cellular regeneration, ACR. And that is by means of injecting protein-rich plasma into the skin, and also stem cells. Now these are somewhat the same to a certain degree because once you get the protein-rich plasma, as you'll see, we do get some initiation of stem cell activity. And I'll show you how we can actually obtain stem cells, which is a bit controversial. So what is ACR? Well, autologous cellular regeneration is a biostimulation injection technique developed by these two chaps, Kubota and Otto, and it utilizes your own bioactive platelet-rich plasma that includes leukocytes with the aim to regenerate aged and damaged skin and the hypodermal or subdermal tissue. So protein-rich plasma, what is it? It's essentially an autologous concentration of human platelets in a volume of plasma measured as around about a million platelets per millimeter uh, cubed. So essentially it's about two to six times the native concentration of whole blood. Um, it's also a concentration of the seven fundamental protein growth factors that have been proved to actively be secreted by platelets to initiate all wound healing. And PRP also includes these other proteins known to act uh, for adhesion such as fibrin, fibronectin and um, vitronectin. So where do we use PRP. Um, my first exposure to it was actually uh, in the form of tissue glue. Uh, there are various forms of tissue glue available and uh, one of them that I use is called Tisil, which is a, uh, is a combination of uh, thrombin uh, and I use it following facelift surgery. Some of the patients don't like that because the, um, the thrombin or the prothrombin, one aspect of it is actually um, derived from Mormons in somewhere in the US, where, where are they? Utah, I think. And uh, so it's derived from blood uh, from Mormons in Utah. So people don't like that. They like to have their own product. So one of the things that we have been using protein-rich plasma for is as a tissue glue following, um, following surgery. This is for facelift surgery, for abdominoplasty, and it decreases the rate of swelling, it decreases um, the, the rate of hematoma and seroma formation following surgery. But it's also been used quite extensively in joints. There are plenty of papers which uh, look at uh, the use of uh, protein-rich plasma into uh, joints for um, increased healing, and also injected directly into wounds to improve the healing as well. So wounds such as uh, diabetic uh, uh, wounds and uh, even for healing, just normal healing tissue. Um, 
So essentially, the platelets perform the function of formation of a blood clot and release of these, uh, the growth factors.